Hello everyone, my name is Jacqueline Lopez Garcia and today I'm gonna to talk about collective action. I'll start with this quote that says, the very fact that a goal or purpose is common to a group means that no one in the group is excluded from the benefit or satisfaction brought about by its achievement. What is collective action? Collective action is a gathering of two or more individuals in an organized movement to work together to achieve a common goal, as defined by Mansour Olson in his book, The Logic of Collective Action. Olson was an American economist and political scientist who argued that groups trying to provide a public good face difficulty in doing it efficiently. Therefore, he created the theory of collect Therefore, he created the theory of collective action, highlighting the importance of group sizes and or membership. He also explained what are some of the possible solutions. The theory, based on economics and political science, argues that the existence of a large group with a common interest does not automatically give rise to collective action. When entities or organizations, regardless of membership size, work in a collective action movement, it will benefit all the members. Also presented three categories of groups engaged in collective action the small or privileged, the intermediate, and the large or latent. The small membership groups believe more in private interest than the greater good. Therefore they, can make, therefore, they can make changes happen without collective action. The intermediate group members cannot advance collective interest on their own. They require an organization to advance, but this comes with low monitoring and enforcement costs. Large groups tend to be more unorganized because individual contributions do not affect the average cost and benefits of the group. Also believe that when there were larger groups, the benefits for the memberships were smaller. This would lead to less organization or adequate progress. Another problem is that the larger group, the more opportunity to create their another problem is that the larger the group, the more opportunity to create the free rider problem. Free riders are people who do not contribute, whether with time, fees, participation, etc., but they receive the benefits. Collective action in sectors that demand the government to produce public goods goes from the labor movement to industry groups and taxpayer associations, among others. Another example of free riders include those who benefit from public goods, like parks, public roads, national defense, and libraries, but do not pay or underpay for those services. Here, it's almost impossible to exclude people from enjoying these services, even if they have not contributed at all. There are many action associations that try to persuade the government to produce public goods, such as tax rates, election reforms, or the right to own personal firearms. If approved, even the non-members can enjoy these benefits. Other collective political actions with basic strategies to secure public goods include lobbying and publicity campaigns. In the labor sector, a current example is Starbucks. The employees started organizing in 2021 with local stores and a few employees at a time. Currently, more than 250 stores have approved unions across the country. Workers from those stores, despite their participation, are receiving the benefits of collective actions a few of them negotiated. Examples of large social movements involved in collective action include the civil rights movements, the Me Too campaign, and the Black Lives Matter. Organizers and activists are particularly interested in motivating people to join a collective action movement and create social change by implementing or stopping changes. The critical phase is to create a process to mobilize individuals to a collective commitment after feeling a sense of injustice and blame. In the solutions, also presented two preconditions for organization success, smaller groups and selective incentives. A group has to be small enough to make changes without much interference. The smaller the group, the bigger the significance of each member, and it's more difficult to hide from obligations. Larger groups provide anonymity to their members and can have the free rider problem. Selective incentives allow individuals non-collective incentives or are coerced into accepting the greater common good. Individuals usually are not motivated to bear any burden or cost in participating in a large group to achieve collective goals. Therefore, incentives or coercion need to be used to motivate them, 
and they have to be at the individual level. In a world with a very complex political economy, individuals have realized there are many advantages when they gather their resources to aim for change. Usually, a person joins an organization or group to enjoy the benefits it provides by interacting with others with similar interests. Although collective action is perceived as a movement toward the public good, it will not succeed in large unorganized groups. Thank you for your time.